Hello, students. Today we're going to learn about shapes and how we can use them in our artwork. Today you're going to need blank white paper, a pencil, and a ruler for our lesson on shapes. For our art project, you will need several sheets of colored construction paper, scissors, pencil, marker, ruler, and a glue stick. If you don't have a glue stick, use tape or liquid school glue. If you don't have the colored paper you would like for this project, you can also get white paper and color it any color you would like with crayons or colored pencils. Let's review what we learned last week. A line is the path of a moving point. In other words, if we were to create a dot with our pencil and drag it across the paper, we create a line. But if we were to draw the line and bring it back to the beginning where we started, we have created a shape. A shape is a flat and closed space. Let me demonstrate. Once I place my writing tool onto the paper, I've created a dot. Whenever we move across the paper with our writing tool, we've created a line. Now watch me continue connecting that line and bringing it back to the beginning. I've created here a rectangle. A shape can be any form. Watch me make this wavy line. I'm going to continue the wavy line and bring it back to the beginning. And now we have a shape. A shape can be measured by its length and its width. Shapes do not have height or depth. They are always flat or two-dimensional. There are many types of shapes. Today, we are going to draw the two main types. Today, we're going to draw geometric and organic shapes. Grab your paper and pencil and let's begin. Geometric shapes are enclosed lines that can be measured with basic mathematics and have common names like square, rectangle, triangle, or circle. They have clear edges or boundaries. We often see these shapes in many places, but they are difficult to find in nature. For a circle, or for any of these shapes, you can find objects in your home and place them on the paper to use as a guide if you would like. Here are some fun shapes to try. A hexagon is made of six equal sides. Whereas an octagon is made up of eight equal sides. Can you think of any shapes or signs you have seen that use the shape of an octagon? Next time you are in your car, Look out the window and see how many signs you can find that use geometric shapes. Next we have organic shapes. These shapes are more complex to measure because they have so many curves and edges. Many organic shapes can be found in nature, like a leaf or an apple. Here you can see I drew together three shapes to create the outline of my apple. Organic shapes are more difficult to describe mathematically, and many don't have names because they are abstract. Abstract shapes like this one here can also be described as freeform. For today's art project, we will be making a tree collage. We're going to be cutting out shapes out of construction paper and making a colorful outdoor scene of abstract trees. This project was inspired by one of my favorite books, The Tree Lady by Joseph Hopkins, illustrated by Jill McElmory. This book is about Catherine Olivia Sessions, a woman who discovered ways to bring plants, trees, and other foliage that would grow well and thrive in the hottest places of San Diego, California. The illustrator of the book, Jill McElmory, used circular, geometric, and organic shapes to represent the trees with unique line patterns 
drawn inside the rounded shapes. I also like how she layered the trees on this page to make some of the trees look like they are farther away to give the picture depth and character. For this project, we are going to do the same as this scene but with a paper collage. A collage is a piece of art made by sticking different materials onto a backing. For today's collage, we are going to stick together pieces of construction paper, but collages can be made of all types of materials, feathers, craft pom-poms, even string. Here I am gathering my paper, pencil, marker, ruler, scissors, glue stick, and tape just in case. I also have my white paper and coloring pencils in case I want to create a different colored paper I don't have with me. Let's start with the backing. First, pick two different colors of construction paper, one to be the sky and one to be the ground. If you would like to make a smaller project, you can glue these two together vertically, but here I am going to place them both horizontally. They are both a little too big for my liking, so I'm going to cut a couple inches off the length of each paper. I placed my ruler on the paper and drew a line to show where I should cut. I am going to save the extra scraps of paper just in case I need them later. Now I can use the sky as my straight edge to trim the brown paper. I just lined it up with the other sheet and drew my line. Now I know both pieces of paper will be the same size. Once you are done, take your glue stick and lightly glide across the top of the paper that will be your ground. Take the bottom edge of the other paper you are using for the sky and press them together firmly. Set it aside and let it dry. Now we are going to create our tree shapes. I chose autumn colors for my trees, but use any colors you would like. Here I have found a circular cup I found in my kitchen to use as my guide to trace circles. I freehanded other shapes used my ruler to make triangles, and I also used the scrap paper from when I trimmed my background to create a square and rectangle guide to outline more shapes. Here I'm going to show you how to make a paper octagon. Take a square piece of paper, then cut equal sized triangles on each corner of the square. Once you've done that, you created eight sides to your octagon. You can now use this guide to make octagon trees in different colors. Now I will show you how to cut difficult shapes with lots of curves. I am going to keep my hand holding the scissors very still and only use my fingers to open and close the scissors. With my opposite hand holding the paper, I'm going to turn the paper slowly as my scissors follow the outline of the shape. Each time I open the scissors, I pause. Then I continue turning the paper at the same time as I am slowly closing the scissors. Repeat this process continuing to follow the wavy line of your shape, and you will have a smooth wavy tree. Here I am going to show you two ways you can cut out a cloud-shaped tree. I turn the paper at each curve as I close the scissors, then I stop once I get to the end of each curve. You don't have to follow the outline exactly. Here is a little bump, and I noticed it didn't fit the same size as the other curves I drew, so I decided to cut it out.
Another way to cut this shape is by cutting a small triangle at the end of each curve. Then, go back and slowly cut the outline of each individual curve and have the short scraps fall off of your shape. Now that I have cut out all of my shapes, I am going to draw fun line patterns to look like branches on the trees. Take one of your shapes and first decide which is the top and which is the bottom of your tree. Then make a line down the middle for the trunk. Next you are going to create fun line patterns for the branches of your trees. These are the patterns that I drew on my trees. Feel free to pause the video here if you would like examples of line patterns for your branches and shapes. Now it's time to lay out your trees. I laid out my trees into three different layers. Once I decided where I wanted my trees to be, I removed rows 1 and 2 so I could glue the back layer first. I liked the look of having the trees go past the edge of the background, so I started on one end, gluing only part of the tree onto the edge of the paper. As I was gluing, I decided which trees I wanted to be in front and which trees I wanted to be in the back. Here you can see I slid the green rectangle tree behind the yellow oval and orange wavy tree to make it look like the green tree is in the far back of the picture. If you are using a glue stick, try not to press too hard so you have a smooth finish. Same with liquid glue, just squeeze a few little dots of glue, not a lot. When you are deciding where you want to place your trees, think about the colors and line patterns. Here I chose four different colors for my trees. I found that putting two trees of the same color next to one another did not work well for me because they blended together too much. I also noticed I liked having trees of the same pattern far away from one another so my picture looked even and balanced. You are going to continue gluing your layers of trees until you are able to cover the line between the ground and the sky. Deciding where you want your trees to be in your collage may take some time, but it is going to make a beautiful work of art once you have them in place. And here is my finished piece. I completed the front row trees by adding tree trunks connecting them to the ground. I had enough room for a pathway at the bottom of the collage, so I drew a pathway with wavy lines. Then to tie it all together, I took the line patterns I drew on the tree branches and drew some of them on the pathway to make it look like abstract rocks, grass, and pebbles. I also drew swirls in the sky for fun abstract clouds and the sun. Again, if you want to make a smaller project, you can have your backing be placed vertically instead of horizontally. Don't forget to sign your work and date it in the back. I hope you enjoyed today's project. Don't forget to check out the book, The Tree Lady and see the beautiful artwork illustrated by Jill McElmory. Until next time, take care and stay creative.